Hi, I'm Jay Staffstrom and I work on some of the coolest spiders on the planet. These ogre face net casting spiders that we worked on for this paper not only have unique and fascinating foraging behavior, but they also have some really cool sensory systems that are well adapted uh, for allowing them to capture prey in, in their own net casting method. The species that we actually looked at is Dinopus spinosa, and you can find them here in Florida or um, scattered across the southeastern U.S. So these spiders can actually be pretty difficult to find because during the day they're really well camouflaged. So they're fairly convincingly cryptic in their color, morphology, and behavior throughout the day. So these spiders are nocturnal. They do nothing during the day uh, but hide uh, and wait until sunset. So yeah, when these spiders come out at night, um, they exhibit some extraordinary hunting behavior that's totally unique to this family of spider. Um, and what they do is they'll, they'll make a frame web that kind of looks like the letter A out of non-sticky silk. And then within that frame, they'll, they'll make a fuzzy rectangular net that they hold with their front forelegs um, and they'll actively ensnare prey with this net. Um, they, can, they can catch prey with this net both with prey items moving beneath them, like walking on the ground uh, beneath their frame web. They can uh, do a, a forward strike, is what it's called, when they're lunging downward um, and tackling prey that way. Or if an insect is flying above or close, close by, they can actually spring up backward, um, and that, that's called the backward strike, and catch things out of the air that way. So something that I haven't said yet is that um, ogre-faced spiders from the genus Dinopus have the biggest eyes of any spider. Um, and they're hypersensitive to light, uh, obviously useful in their nocturnal foraging habits. Um, and that's something that I specifically have shown uh, not so long ago, that when you uh, visually occlude their enlarged eyes, uh, they're no longer able to capture prey walking beneath them when you, when you put them back out in nature and let them do their thing. But those same spiders can still catch things out of the air just fine. And so that finding actually backs up previous research um, that hypothesized that these spiders can actually hear prey that they're catching with their backward strike. Um, and so that's something that we wanted to further investigate like, can they actually hear from a distance? Um, what can they hear? Are they more sensitive to specific frequencies? Stuff like that. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what this paper is about. So the, the first thing we did is um, the brain and leg recordings where uh, I brought spiders back to Cornell, to the Hoy Lab, um, and we recorded neural activity both from the brain and from the leg of spiders. Uh, and then we played a randomized assortment of frequencies, uh, pure tone frequencies to these spiders while they're restrained. And we were able to look at when their neurons are getting excited for different tones. And what we found there is that um, while they're sensitive to low frequency tones as we had expected, but something interesting that, that we didn't really expect to, to find was that these um, net casting spiders are, uh, they're sensitive to a wide range of frequencies. So all the way up to 10 kilohertz, which um, we, we did not expect initially. After we, we found that these spiders were sensitive to such a broad range of frequencies, uh, we wanted to test if um, they would actually behaviorally react to um, both lower and higher, relatively higher, frequency pure tones. And so I did this both uh, out in the field and back in the lab where I would take a portable speaker and I would play them uh, randomized frequencies um, and then record their behavior to see if, uh, if they would actually react. And uh, what I saw is that um, when you play these spiders low frequency tones that um, are about the f known frequencies of insect prey that they typically catch. They'll actually spring up and strike at these at these tones. And so 
um, that was 150, 400, and even uh, 750 hertz um, they'll strike at. But they don't behaviorally respond, at least in a foraging context, to these higher frequencies. Um, or also pulses of white noise I use as well as a control. Yeah, so it seems like uh, the spiders are um, using the, the, the ability to detect low frequency tones to catch things out of the air. So we're not quite sure what they use the high frequency sensitivity for. Um, but something that I've noticed in the field is that uh, small like songbirds, like cardinals, uh, blue tits, uh, and other, other mixed flocks will actually come through and forage in these palms, um, pecking at the fronds and, and picking things off that, um, that are around. And uh, we're hypothesizing that birds have been picking them off and their, uh, potentially their ability to hear birds chirping uh, might be beneficial for them. Uh, so uh, these, the, the birds that I've seen foraging in these palms, uh, they have song or they have calls that are about in the frequencies that the, the spiders are also sensitive to. Um, so maybe hearing a predator coming might be an early warning of a, uh, yeah, some life or death situation that's about, about to happen. We also investigated how these spiders might be hearing. So no spider has an ear that detects pressure changes like our ears do, but various species of spider have been shown to, to hear without them. We looked at the metatarsal organ, which is a vibration sensor located near the tips of the legs of these and most other spiders. And we do find evidence supporting a role in uh, acoustic detection using these vibration sensors. And these results reaffirm pioneering research done by Walcott and Vanderclute, who showed that the metatarsal organ is responsible for acoustic detection in cobweb spiders.